to take off this carpet that's starting to come unglued to the cabinet. Um, it just, it actually looks like it's going to be pretty easy uh, to start out, at least on the major areas where it's come up. These cabinets are probably a good, I would say, 12 to 15 years old. And um, they've done well, man. I mean, I, they're a heavy cabinet. I don't mind the weight. They have some casters on the bottom. But as you can see, the carpet has really started to come unglued in a, in a pretty terrific way all the way around it. So my goal, and I'm teaching myself as I go along here, my goal is to first remove all of the hardware and uh, take the handles off, take the jack plates out, take the drivers out. Uh, probably not, not the lows. Um, I'll show you the front again. What I plan to do here is uh, just take off this metal grill. Um, hopefully it'll be pretty easy. It looks like it is just a bunch of screws. And I think what I'm going to do is put some wood filler back in these holes just to make sure that when I do reapply uh, the screws that it, they do have something to bite into, especially up here um, on the horn. Um, anyway, uh, these are four inch drivers on the woofers. I think it's a one inch, a one inch uh, driver up on the, the tops. Um, Sonic is the company. I'm pretty sure it's loaded with eminent stuff. It's certainly not high end, but um, yeah, I got four kids to feed. I'm not even going to get into semantics about what's the best speaker to buy. I do have JBL SRX stuff as well, but I've just, these have really paid their way. They're easy to move. I love the casters on the bottom, so that's that. The product I'm going to experiment with is called Durabac. Uh, the particular formula I have is Durabac 18, which is a, it is a UV rated um, uh, coating. This kind of resembles the same type of uh, coating that you would find uh, in, on, for lack of a better word, on a truck bed or you know, like a slip resistant coating for a walkway. Um, the, like I said, this is UV uh, safe. I'm not sure I needed to spend the extra money to get it, uh, the UV protection, but I just, I like to do things right and, and prepare for everything if I'm going to do it at all. So, anyway, uh, I'll kind of just take video as I go along here and and photos or whatnot and hopefully come up with an interesting story about how it turned out. I'm hoping when this is done that I do get a, a finish on these speakers that resembles something uh, a little bit more in line with what my JBL SRX tops have which is that kind of a, a smooth black finish. I ran across this uh, this product on a website by another uh, user. I think he was using it for a some type of cabinet, um, a speaker cabinet, I can't remember exactly, but he had a lot of good things, a lot of good knowledge to say about it, and he was pretty well read. It seemed like he knew kind of what he was doing, and I, he said just spend the extra money to get this product uh, versus the stuff that you can buy over the counter at a normal hardware store. He said that the, the Durabac is just a, it's really easy to, uh, to apply. You do have to do two coats, um, but the thing is is that what makes it different at least is that you can go back over your product again if you need to add a uh, if you get a bunch of scuffs or whatnot it'll allow you to recoat without having to do much else uh, to the surface but who knows uh, anyway Durabac 18 I think was shipping and everything it was probably about $150 for a gallon and uh, uh, we'll see what happens I really don't want to do carpet so there you go all right, again, J uh, Jeremiah Nickel from JF Productions. Uh, you can also find me on Facebook. Thanks again. Okay, so I got the first phase complete on the first speaker, which was take off all the hardware and also uh, strip all the carpet off. I knew I was going to have to do that. And I knew that I was dealing with the cheap speaker, and I soon found out and soon realized that it looks like wafer board. The... Uh, Wafer board is in decent shape. Um, the only problem is some of it's kind of flaking off, um, and that's to be expected. Also on the bottom, I, I'm not going to worry about flipping it over, but there is a couple of solid pieces of wood. And I noticed I had had a rattle in one of my cabinets, and I found out where it is. It's a seam right here is, uh, is pretty loose. So I'm going to put some wood glue in there and try to find a way to clamp this sucker overnight. And, 
let that settle in and uh, seal this gap make sure that's not rattling anymore also replace one of the the casters as well anyway so that's what I'm dealing with now and so I think the net result is going to be mixed um, I'm just speculating that with the fact this is wafer board and it looks like it had either gotten some paint on it from the factory or that is black mold from it getting wet which I don't think it is but anyway the the reality is I, I don't know I'm gonna do two coats on this but I really don't know uh, how smooth my finish is gonna be it's gonna be in the end and that's okay I'm not terribly heartbroken if I got some raised areas or depressions because of the wafer board. Uh, I just I know it's going to be tight box when it's done because I am going to go ahead and glue. Some, I'm going to go ahead and glue some stuff up and uh, fix the box up and should be good to go. Um, kind of got champagne taste on a beer budget. I'm not really interested in replacing these speakers right away, as I've said. And they're a cheap enough speaker and they've lasted this long. It's it's worth doing an experiment. So we'll see what it looks like. All right, <clears throat> I'm back. It's uh, day day three, I guess. I just got done uh, putting the hardware back on the speakers. Got everything uh, uh, put on there in about, I would say the first speaker with the dirt back took probably about 20 minutes to cover. The second speaker took a little bit longer because the, uh, the uh, sides of it were a lot more rough. Um, I got it all spread on there, probably about a half an hour for that one. And then I let them all sit for about an hour. Uh, both cabinets sit for about an hour and then reapply the second coat. I used almost an entire gallon uh, for two speakers. It was, I think the directions said two coats will cover 60 square feet. That's about what I had. And so I've already got all the hardware put back on the speakers. And if you'll notice that the finish on it, uh, I was worried that I was going to get a lot of straight lines and stuff from all the wood, the the uh, I guess for lack of a better word, wafer board was creating. But this stuff leveled out pretty good, especially by the time I did the second coat. And uh, there were some areas. It may be hard to see on video. If I shoot on edge here, you can see there's some like burrs, and that was from the leftover carpet. Um, here's a good one right here. That's kind of hard to see with the camera. Uh, there was some like burrs left over from the carpet and I went ahead and just coated over it. I think if I was to do this again and if I knew I had more time uh, I would do a little bit better job either creating a finish that was smoother to begin with or just taking the time to get every little tiny piece of carpet off but I'm telling you it was a struggle as it was with just the amount of carpet I had so like I said these cabinets have paid for themselves for multitude of times over the last 12 years that uh, they've been in use and so I don't feel bad at all by the condition they ended up in I know for a fact that water's not going to penetrate these suckers I didn't really anticipate making an all-weather speaker but I'm not sure what more steps I would need to actually call this an all-weather speaker um, it's almost there not that I do a lot of events outside in the rain but I do I do a fair number of events outside where a carpeted speaker was obviously a bad decision and it wasn't one that I made it was just the the, the equipment that I had for the for the time that I had it and so now I've got a speaker that I have no problem seeing some moisture get on there if I have to especially on the bottoms where carpet was just falling off uh, there was some wood on the bottom looked like it had been kind of it wasn't really rotted out at all uh, but it, it looked like you know it wasn't going to be too long before that wood was going to start to really fall apart so I was real impressed with the way this uh, this product finished and I hope that if any of you decide to use a a product that's similar to a truck bed liner to uh, cover your speakers. Uh, Duraback is it has been a real winner for me. Um, yeah, it's it's expensive, but as I've read from other people, you definitely get what you pay for. And now I'm already thinking ahead to whatever the uh, next project might be that I could at least make an excuse to put this on. I'm already thinking hmm, lawnmower decks and you know uh, eventually like a porch or something like that. On a side note, with the Duraback that I had left over, um, I coated my uh, tennis ball air cannon. This is a uh, <laughs> this is an all PVC tennis ball air cannon that that uh, I designed using some help from the internet. And uh, aside from the uh, sprinkler valve here, everything has been coated in Duraback. Now, for a little comparison, this is actual Rhino lining 
that was used on another gun that I had made. And the rhino lining, as you can see, has a lot more rubber particulate in the uh, mix. This is Duraback here. It's a, it's a much smoother finish. Um, I think also, uh, as a side note to myself in the future, it seems like to get the textured stuff might have made more sense on the speakers. And the reason why I say that is because with all that extra texture, I'm thinking it would kind of hide some of the imperfections in the original surface. But again, I really don't feel like that it was really uh, a big trade-off. This was a learning thing for me too. I'm no professional, definitely don't claim to be. The only thing I know how to do is get people to dance and have a good time and teach kids music. That's what I do for a living. So anyway, um, once again, I'm Jeremiah from JF Productions and I uh, hope the uh, Dura back.